All I can tell you is that under my tenure, we had approximately 90,000 more people moved to Saskatoon, 50,000 jobs created, number one economy overall average for a 10-year period. I think those are pretty good numbers. And uh, again, uh, history will look upon the, the new council as to see what they do. It's not for me to, to try to second guess where they're going. Um, that, that's up to them to, to do that. No, I have no advice for him. It, it's for the mayor to determine what they'd like to do and where they'd like to go. Uh, during the campaign, he said that he had his own way that he wanted to go, and far be it for me to tell him what he should do now after he said what he wanted to do. So I'll let the, the mayor clerk go his own direction. I never had a fruition other than to make sure that the city was united. Uh, we had a city that was divided, and I wouldn't talk about east side, west side. Matter of fact, the Star Phoenix ran an article on that in 2004, I believe it was January 2004, saying that I was wordsmithing in their editorial page. Uh, I don't believe in sides, I believe in ends. Uh, when you pick sides, you pick winners and losers, and there shouldn't be a winner or a loser in the city of Saskatoon. It should be, uh, everyone should benefit. The fact that you, you know, Kelly Moore showed up at, at City Hall to shake Clark's hand, but you didn't show up until afterwards. Why, why weren't you there, I guess, to shake, to shake Clark's hand after that? And, and have you spoken to him since? No, I haven't spoken to him. He claims he's tried to get a hold of me, but I have no records of that whatsoever. Uh, and again, that was his time, his time to savor a victory. And, you know, why would I want to impede upon any of that at all? And so, if he does call, what would you say? I mean, are you going to answer the phone if he does call to ask for some advice? Well, I don't know if he'll call and ask. I guess that, that again, we'll have to wait and see. And, I mean, are you, are you, have, have you made any efforts to reach out to him? I've been cleaning out everything and getting everything done right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just making sure that I wasn't in his way when he was to move into the office. Uh, unlike when I was mayor, uh, at 6 o'clock in the evening, I still wasn't able to get into the mayor's office. I wanted to make sure that when I left, that it was uh, a situation where, in fact, he was able to come and uh, get ready to become the mayor. And, and so you're saying that's that's why you didn't show up on election night to shake his hand is because you just didn't want to steal the steal the spotlight. I'm not going to steal the limelight from him. Why, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to get into a situation like that? Why would I want to go out right after and trail behind wherever he was going to do interviews that I would show up next uh, to deflect that? Why wouldn't I? allow him that opportunity to in, enjoy the moment. It's, uh, there's a lot of responsibility that falls on your shoulders. 270,000 people are, are at home praying that you'll make the right decisions for their families because if you make the wrong decisions, it can have a catastrophic effect upon the entire e economy in our community. The, the, the mayor, your leaders are, are the ones that are supposed to lead. Um, unfortunately today in a lot of cases you have politicians that want to be followers. Like, I think over the years, uh, birthdays, I think probably the hardest part is coming home after a council meeting or being at a function and everyone's gone to bed already. And the birthday cake's out there with a couple of candles on it still. And they've gone to bed. Uh, maybe I'll be able to make those now. Every day you get to be the mayor. Like if you look at the city of Saskatoon, how many people will have that chance in the in the history of the city to be the mayor. Few and, few and far between, so uh, I, I always thought of that. And like with businesses, for doing ribbon cuttings, whatever. Heavens, they're investing a lot of their money, their uh, tremendous equity, uh, worrying about how they're going to survive. Why wouldn't you want to go and thank them for what they're doing in our community? And I th little children, for example, with lemonade stands for Lemonade Day, why wouldn't you go around and try and buy as many lemonades as you can that day and taste them all and, and thank them for trying to be young entrepreneurs in your community, going out and thanking those at Halloween that don't go out and collect candies but in fact instead go and knock door to door raising funds for UNICEF, that sort of thing. Like, Why wouldn't you want to give back to those who are giving the most all the time? And so for me, that's, that's what it's all about.